Hey guys, it's Game of Cow. Welcome to another Pokemon TCG draft. This time we're in Fire Red, Leaf Green, starting the 2005 format. Man, I didn't realize we were this sort of far in already. Uh, Fire Red, Leaf Green was honestly one of the cooler games that came out for me uh, for a while. Uh, I did get back into Pokemon in Ruby Sapphire. <laughs> like, I wasn't going to play the GPA ones, and then I got. Uh, Absol, like, as a thing, because I got, I got to borrow the game for a bit, and uh, that was the coolest thing, and I wanted to play the game. Uh, Fire Relief Green was the first one I got for myself for a while after that, so it's a little bit of nostalgia there, not just because it's Gen 1 pandering, because honestly, that's not really for me, but... That said, there are quite a few cool cards in here, a lot of uh, game changes as well. Um, so we'll have to see how well they do. But uh, just as a sort of very brief thing, we want uh, Pidgeot over here because it's uh, computer search on uh, on legs, which is amazing. Uh, we would like Nido Queen if we could get it because this was the surprise hit for 2005 Worlds. Um, Pepper, not Pepper. Uh, I don't know what Pepper wants out of this one. Um, Sai wants Beedrill uh, because that second attack looks really fun, and I do agree. Um, and then there's a bunch of trainers which are a lot of reprints in here, uh, including Experience all coming back, which is pretty good. But um, we want Great Ball, Mount Moon, Versus Seeker, and Celio's Network. We need two of this because there's two in the theme decks. Um, and then there's a bunch of BXs in here. Uh, we can't expect to pull a ton of these, unfortunately, because they are 1 in 12. But if we could, Blastoise would be phenomenal. Very, very good card there. Electrode is the one that I'm really gunning for because uh, Leo already has two Blastoise. So there is that. Uh, and then Zapdos is the other one that I think would be really nice to get. So uh, that's the main stuff. There's a lot of other bits that we can talk about if we get them. But uh, yeah, kind of a compact set in that aspect. Uh, as far as the theme decks go, the main thing to take note of is that this one has a Pidgeot in it, and so is basically guaranteed to be collected. Nothing else really matters, to be honest with you. This Pidgeot is just absolutely absurd. Uh, the other one does have a Beedrill, so if we get a bunch of Pidgeot, we might just take this one so we can get Beedrill for Psy. Obviously, that is just dependent on if we get enough Pidgeot. But honestly... Who really knows at this point? It's kind of silly. Um, we do get a bunch of promos in here too. This is the last time we get promos until the end of the era, which is weird. I guess you just don't get a lot of them in uh, Gen 3. But uh, none of them are any good. I've read through all of them and they're all just garbage. There's a pretty funny Tyranitar EX over here where if you don't discard two basic energy on it, it just doesn't do any damage, which is super silly. Uh, yeah. <laughs> just awful. Absolutely awful. Anyway, um, what may or may not be awful is our pulls from this set, so let's just get into them, see what we can uh, grab out of this, and uh, get going. Alright, so starting off the bat, we've not got anything too fancy in here. Uh, this Cloister is a bit of an asshole. Um, not necessarily good, but annoying if nothing else. Uh, taking 20 less damage from attacks is pretty solid. Uh, Shell Attack just doesn't do a lot of damage though, like 50 for free is uh, below par at this point. Um, Double Bubble is where it's at though. Uh, two coins, 10 damage per heads, and if either of them are heads, the defending Pokemon is paralyzed. So you can use this as a stall tactic if nothing else. Um, not really sure what to think of it to be honest. I don't think it's good, but uh, I could see it. Venomoth is very flippy. But it has zero retreat, which is interesting. Sleep poison is guaranteed, which is kind of crazy. And it does ignore effects of attacks, so only damage hits it. So, yeah, interesting. Not particularly great, though. Uh, this is the new trainer that we don't necessarily need, but uh, Pepper might want this one. Because um, he has Wari, and this works really well with it. Shuffle your deck, look at the top six cards from the deck. Not five, like the uh, Neo Genesis Poke, uh, Pokedex was and uh, putting them back on top of the deck in any order. Pretty interesting. Um, Parasect is somewhat cute, 
uh, search your deck for two basic energy and attach them to any of your non-EX Pokemon is kind of okay actually. This might be might be like a Wally acceleration tech to, to go with. Uh, Fioro unfortunately not super good, never really gets good cards I don't think. Uh, just doesn't do enough damage. We've lost boost energy for the next couple of sets, so no chance really. Um, Next up, we do have another one of the Cloister. We have multi-energy, so this makes our playset now, so definitely happy to see that. Otherwise, nothing really too fancy here, so let's move on. Uh, I mean, is there anything even worth talking about? Hypno, I guess. If you had double battle stuff going, Hypno with Relicamp is a pretty nasty combo. Um, it, Relicamp had deep sleep, so you had to flip two heads in order to wake up, and this makes it so that your Pokemon that stay asleep take 20 damage in between turns. It's pretty good. Um, next we have a Dodrio. This does still have a treat aid like before. It's two energy this time, but it doesn't work on EXs and it doesn't work on itself because it has to be benched for it. And it has a retreat cost, so it's kind of awkward to be honest. Um, this Onyx is not amazing to be honest. Uh, just nowhere near enough damage off of it. Uh, you could maybe use it instead of the other one if you're playing Steelix. I wouldn't recommend it. Here's an interesting card. Marowak is pretty good because we have three Binet, and they kind of work in tandem with each other. Uh, linear attack is neat, 30 snipe is good, but Vengeance is where we want here. Um, you may know this attack from Flareon, actually, in the Plasma era. Uh, except this one has a cap on how much it can do because we are still in quite low HP territory here. Um, it caps out at 90 for free, which is pretty solid. And later on in the format, when we get scramble energy, this is something that we can look back and actually play like super well. So keep an eye on it. Could be could be worth it. Now there is a very interesting pack. We have a Celcilios network. Uh, this lets you search for any non-EX Pokemon and put it into your hand. So you search for the Pidgeot and then use the Pidgeot to search for the EX if that's what you need. But you just get any Pokemon, which is super, super good. It pairs very well with Nidoqueen over here. This was a sleeper hit for the 2005 uh, World Championship and I forget if it actually won or if it's just like second place or something, but it did extremely well for itself. And it's largely because Scramble Energy was really good that you could just use it with that. But Power Lariat is a really neat attack. 40 plus 10 for each evolution Pokemon you have in play. So obviously it's guaranteed to do 50 because it counts itself, but you can get up to 100 for free energy on this thing which is one energy if you put Scramble on it. Keep an eye on this. This is going to be really, really good later on in the format. Uh, next up, we have Scyther. Unfortunately, not super good here. Uh, can get zero retreat, which is neat, but Fury Cutter just doesn't do anything. Uh, we don't have a Scizor in the moment, so there's not really any point playing it. Um, Haunter, I just want to point out because its ability is like ridiculous. Confusing one of your own active Pokemon. What the heck can you even do with that. This is not in Makuni time. We do not have Dark Primate, so whatever. Uh, Multi, we don't need more at this point, but that's fine. Another Pokedex. A uh, little bit weird on that front, but okay. Uh, next up, we have another Parasect. I suppose that could be interesting. Chansey is just funny because it either does 50 damage on heads or heals 50 from itself on tails. You're never going to get the correct effect off it, so whatever, right? Uh, this Radicate is an interesting control tool. Uh, can't get affected by special conditions, so no paralysis, paralysis lock on this. Zero retreat natively is quite nice. And for one energy, search your deck for uh, search your discard, sorry, for a base uh, Pokemon card, a trainer card, and an energy card. Recover special energy. Actually worth noting. Recover specials and also gets any trainer back. This could be good, to be honest. Ho, 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 ho. That is a very interesting end to the first third of the set here. Electrode EX. We actually get to talk about this thing now. Its Crush and Burn attack is interesting. This actually got a reprint as a GX in uh, Gen 7, which is pretty fun. 
Its attack is okay, like discard as many energy as you like attached to your Pokemon in play, do 30 plus 20 for each that you discarded. If you have a good outlet for energy acceleration, this can do quite a bit of damage, and its own ability is where that acceleration comes in. You knock out the Electrode, so you're giving up two prizes to do this, but search your discard pile for five energy cards and attach them to your non-EX Pokemon in any way that you like. Holy hell, this ability is busted as hell. Um, next set, we get Tyranitar, Dark Tyranitar specifically, which is extremely good with this. I think this was uh, what people do consider the best deck of 2005 overall. Uh, this card is nuts. If we can get two of this, just two of it, that is going to be crazy. This by itself might be good enough, though. We'll have to see. But for now, oh boy. We do have a Farfetch'd here, the only reason this is particularly worth noting is because we get experience all back in this set. Uh, so I pulled three copies of that card before, so even if I don't get any more, I still get access to it from before, which is really good. And the reason that matters is because Farfetch can actually search for two of them out of the deck and just attach them to your stuff. You can also get Strength Charms or Balloon Berries with this too, so it's pretty good overall. Um, Interesting opening for attack anyway. I have heard of this Kangaskhan seeing play. Don't really see why, to be honest. Um, Fetch was fine when it first came out. And I guess it can do some other stuff for like 2 energy or whatnot, but really? I don't know, seems worse than what we had before. Second Dodrio is interesting. The Need Arena, we would need this if we pull enough Nido Queen. Um, searches for 2 evolution cards on 2 energy. That's respectable. Uh, double Rainbow could pay that, so it's pretty okay. We do get another Nido Queen. Wow, this is interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, double Rainbow could still do this, uh, do this proud too. Uh, this card is neat. Maybe we'll get to use it. Great Ball is also another one of the trainers I really need to see here. Uh, Search it out for a basic that isn't in the X. Bench it. It's Nest Ball in Gen 7, and this card is insane. Oh, there's just so many stuff for that. Re uh, get wrecked, door ball. I would. We had a conversation about this earlier, but um, yeah, Matt's like, yeah, I'm still gonna play door ball, but he did only get one copy of this, I guess. So there is that. But uh, I'm playing this every single time uh, because you're not usually getting basic EXs anyway. You're getting Dunsparce, and there are so many games that you just lose because you don't have any way of getting extra Pokemon. And your dual ball double tails is. Are you kidding me? Yo, free Nido Queen in here, huh? Well, well, well. Looks like we're gonna have to try and trade for stuff that way. Huh. That's a that's a very scary amount of stuff. Also the Need Arena too. Maybe we don't even need to trade into that. Okay. Tangler is something I want to note. Apart from the artwork is adorable. I really love Yukimori's art. It's all of the uh, the clay clay doh type uh, stuff. It's so cool, like play doh everything. It's really really neat. Um, the card itself is cool though, because this is the first time since the Rattata from uh, Team Rocket that we actually get to manipulate our prize cards. I don't know if it's going to be worth playing, but I mean the status condition stuff is quite nice too. Also Wiggle, it's a really funny name, but. Fine Tease is where it's at. Look at your prizes without showing the opponent. Choose one of those and switch it with a top card of your deck without looking at it. If you play PokéNav with this thing, you can guarantee that you know, or even the Pokédex thing, right? You guarantee that you know what the top card of your deck is. So you know what that prize is. So you get extra knowledge on that as well as potentially picking out the card that you have prized. The fact that this lets you take a card out of the prizes in certain decks is going to be ridiculous. Uh, I'm going to see if we can find a way of uh, abusing that thing. He was one that uh, Psy was really interested in, mostly because it's a frog. Um, Polymath is cute. Like, Spiral is interesting because of Split Spiral Punch here. If the opponent's confused, they can't retreat, which obviously works with its first attack because it's all the confusion. Mega Throw is an interesting attack as well. In an EX heavy format, doing 80 damage to the EXs is a two shot on everything. It actually one shots Blaziken too. So, there's reasons to use this. I'm not sure if it's worth a stage two. But Split Spiral Punch is very annoying and will punish decks because we don't have a lot of space for switching. 
So maybe I'm going to put that in the maybe category right now. Bro. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We have two of this thing? Oh no. <laughs> oh no, this is going to make people upset. <laughs> Do note this says energy cards, by the way. I didn't mention that before. This does not say basic energy. You can get double rainbows, darkness energies, whatever the hell you want with this. It's worth the two prizes. Nido King is also pretty good. Uh, I mean, it's okay. I don't know if this is actually good enough with the Nido Queen, but um, I didn't even mention before like the power of these things. Nido Queen gives all of your non Nido Queen uh, Nido family uh, dudes zero retreat, and Nido King gives all of your non Nido King Nido families plus ten damage. So obviously the idea is that you're supposed to play king and queen together and your Nido Queen can do like 110, 120 damage if you get more of these in play. Uh, they do have different weaknesses as well. Queen is weak to grass, king is weak to water. Um, its attacks are okay as well. Bound Crush is maybe a little expensive at the moment, but give scramble energy to this and that could actually be really good. Um, Earth Poison is also kind of neat. Being able to uh, to do 40 for 2 is okay, and poisoning if they have damage counters on them already. If you can spread just a little bit around, this is good enough to be honest. I think both Nido families do have Call for Family as well, that lets you search for the Nidos, so you possibly don't even need Dunsparce in this deck, so that's pretty good. Okay, a couple of big cards that I wanted to see here. First off, this is one that I need to trade to Sai because he wants to build this deck. I think it'd be very fun to see. Um, King was really quite good. Saltwater is an intriguing attack if you can do this early, which Wally lets you do if you dedicate to go second. Um, you can have free energy on this thing in the first turn, which is wild. It's especially wild because its attack actually functions with that too. Um, it's Hydro Cannon. 30 damage for 2, 50 for 3, 70 for 4. Very, very strong. Can also use different types of basic energy too, so you can make this splash into other decks, but you want to have a water focus with this thing because of salt water. Via Seeker is a card I am very surprised to have not seen in more lists back in the day, um, but it's super good. Uh, if you've ever played in Gen 6, you will know this card is absolutely busted. But maybe the fact if you can't pick up the support that you played that turn is enough of a deterrent for people? I really don't see it. This is going to be an excellent tool in our format to shore up support accounts that we just don't have a lot of. So you don't want to play, you probably don't want to play more than like two or three of this. At mo you don't want to play a full four I think in our lists because we don't have strong enough supporters for that. Uh, mostly utility based ones, right? But what we do have is uh, low accounts of cards because we just can't pull them. This is a fantastic way of solving that problem, so keep an eye on it, we're going to definitely want to play it. Huh. Well, I didn't think we'd get to talk about this card, but uh, say hello to a super weirdo card here. Um, Gengar EX is very interesting. It's got Two of everything down the bottom. Two retreat, two weaknesses, two resistances. Um, the weakness to dark is probably killer here because next set is full of dark Pokemon. Spoilers, I suppose. Um, it's two attacks are very good though. Poltergeist for two energy. 40 damage base is actually really good for a Poltergeist based attack. And uh, 40 plus 10 for each trainer card that's in the opponent's hand is just pretty strong, right? There's a lot of times, especially after a big Steven, where you've got a lot of supporter cards are in play in uh, this format, so that works very well for that. And then price count is intriguing. 60 base is really nice, but 100 if you have... if you're down on prizes, it does 100. It's kind of cool. Good card. Uh, I think the, the base set, uh, the base like family for it is pretty bad though, so who knows if it's going to see play. We do have a Nidorino here as well. This is good if we do want to play uh, the Queen line. Uh, Rend is just okay, I suppose, but uh, we just need it if we want to actually play that. Rounding out our second third here, another Kangaskhan. 
Butterfree is one we haven't seen yet, actually, so it's worth noting. If it's in the active, you can heal 10 off of all of your Pokémon between turns. Is that strong enough for this to see play? I don't know, but it is very interesting. It's not weak to fire like most bug, uh, most like uh, grass Pokémon are. It's resistant to uh, fighting too, which is really good. So this probably does very well against Magma. Um, it keeps switching stuff around as well. Gust is okay. Uh, you don't really play this over Blossom, I don't think, but it's, it's got traits that are good for it. The Caterpie can also search out Metapod and Butterfree too, so it's cool. Alright, next third, another Nidoking. Well, we could play the literal definition of Queendom at this point, I guess. Uh, the Nido Kingdom could be uh, could be our deck here. It's kind of cool, I guess. Uh, next up, more versus Seeker. This is what we need to see. Um, I think I need another Great Ball as well, because I want to play two of those as my standard, but VS Seeker is great. Uh, two copies of that is what we need here. That's fantastic. We do get a reprint of Oaks Research as well. This Arcanine is not really worth noting because there's two in the theme deck and it's terrible anyway. We've lost boost energy, so Heat Tackle is just too hard to power up at this point. Uh, definitely not worth it. There's a card we haven't gone to talk about yet, Snorlax. So Snorlax actually wants to be asleep. It heals 20 from itself if it stays asleep in between turns. Um, collapse is just a straightforward 10, put itself to sleep, so it actually does synergize with itself. And then Toss and Turn can be used when it's asleep, and if you are asleep it does 60 instead of 30. Very weird card, but um, if only you could use this with the Relic Hound as well, and just keep it asleep with Deep Sleep. Uh, double Strat maybe, I don't know. Um, next in, another Dodrio. I think we've got a couple of those already. Bill's Maintenance comes in here. We probably will use this this round since we don't have that many TV Reporter. And we've lost uh, Underground Expedition, which was my, like, extra TV Reporters. So we might well use a Maintenance here. More Need Arena. I think that's a place out at this point. Hopefully we get the Need Rans as well. Uh, more the Tangler. There's, like, three of this now, I think, which is really good. So let's keep on going. <laughs> double magic up. There's experience all, which uh, we did want to get one, so now we have a full four of this. Goes for the far fetch that we've had, so maybe we could use that as a starter. I don't think I have enough great ball to do that though, so not really sure at the moment. Uh, depends on what type of deck we're using. Did I mention this Radicate already? It's like a, I, I probably did, but um, it recovers special energy, so that's kind of cool. Uh, Alright, moving on. Are you kidding me? We even get the Pidgeot in here. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, yeah, people are going to be very mad at me for this draw. Uh, Quick Search is disgusting. It's a hard once per turn, but once during your turn, before you attack, choose any one card from your deck and put it into your hand. Woof. Really, really good. Just get any card you need at any given time. Uh, Clutch is also really good to note. This attack is not insignificant. 40 for 2 and blocking retreat next turn is awesome. So keep an eye out on this too. We're definitely picking the fire red deck and we're getting two of that. Next up, uh, nothing too fancy. We've seen the Hypno already, so let's just move on. Uh, well, we need Haunter if we're going to play Gengar, so I guess there's that. Uh, the Ghastly's not very good either, mind you. Just confuse the opponent at the end of their turn, which... why? You need confusion before then? Like, if it was sleep, I could understand, but that's just really, really weird. Um, next one, Pokedex, sure. Uh, Magneton, sure. Just one pat left. We didn't get a lot of Great Ball in here. Dude. What was this draft? What the heck was this draft? Okay. Blastoise EX is a card that exists. A uh, very, very good card as well. As often as you like during your turn, attach a water from your hand to one of your Pokemon, but you put a damage counter on that Pokemon when you do. This is like a, currently adjacent to Swampert, which we did trade away, so we could use this instead. And this lets you accelerate uh, so much energy. Hyper Whirlpool is a really scary attack too, because it's a guaranteed 80 for 4, and then for every heads that you flip, you discard an energy from the opponent if you don't just kill them outright. 
So, that's a super scary card. Uh, probably for the best that we only got one of it, but... Okay. Coming back down to Earth a little bit on this one. This is a, a very weird one. It's kind of a little bitty because we only have like two copies of a bunch of the cards here. But... The ones that we have like two of are just so, so strong. I I have a hard time thinking this is a uh, bad draft per se. So honestly, this looks kind of insane compared to quite a few that I have seen so far. So yeah, I can't really complain. Let's uh, let's just save these up real quick whilst I am uh, thinking on it. Here we need to go set oh set number twenty one at this stage. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, gonna, am I gonna put the whole thing in? Because I can't bother retyping that every time. We're just gonna put F, uh, F R L G. <laughs> Quite frankly, just cannot be bothered doing that every single time. So, uh, save the thing as, uh, where are we at? Uh, spares? 21. The reason I put the number for the set, by the way, is because that makes it, in Windows, it makes it better for uh, knowing like where the sets are, right? Because Windows sorts by alphabetical, so if you put the number at the front, then it's always correctly sorted. Uh, just a little tip if you're ever doing anything of this nature, and you need to save multiple individual files and stuff. Uh, let's get these spares out as well. I don't think I I mean my tra okay my trainers are extremely weak here there's actually a few that I missed or didn't get a lot of in general uh, yeah there's actually some pretty big flaws in here if we go up to the trainers I did not get any Mount Moon this is actually errata there's no there's no printing of it because I think this is the only time this card ever gets printed um, any Pokemon with 70 or less max HP can't use Poke Powers, so this prevents Delcaddy and Magneton from doing their thing. Very irritating for me to deal with, actually. So, we didn't get that. I only got one Celio, but I know Psy has got multiple, so we can trade for that to get the last one. I only got one Great Ball, which is concerning, to say the least. Um, those are the big flaws in terms of the trainers. So our trainer pull is exceptionally weak here. But I cannot complain that the rest of this. We have one Blastoise. I don't think either of these Squirtle are the ones that we actually want to use here. Because there's one from the... Uh, I want to say it was uh, Magma Aqua, actually. Which has an ability that reduces damage if you have energy on it. So I think that's the one we use here. All the Raticate, too. We might actually need to try and play something with this. Uh, collect on the basic is good, too. Uh, loads and loads of the Pidgey, but that's fine. We're going to get the Pidgeot deck anyway, so two Pidgeot available. Um, no Raichu, a little bit sad there. Only a couple of Nidoran. I need to trade for that, ironically, which is a little bit annoying. Um, fair dues, I suppose. A uh, couple of the Nido King as well, though, so that's fine. We can easily get that going. Bunch of the Parasect. This card is pretty good, so... Maybe I try and build something with that at some point, that could be nice. Uh, what else do we get here that's good? Uh, one Polygraph is whatever. We didn't get Victory Bell, that was another one I was sort of looking at. It's got an ability that like poisons, so that would have been pretty good. Lots of Farfetch'd, so we could use this with Experience All. It's kind of nice. Four Dodrio. We never need this many Dodrio, but still. And here we start getting to some big money. I mean, only one Kingler, a little bit of a shame there, but... Um, we have Electro EX. We have two of it, too. Yoinks. Um, one Marowak. Bit of a shame we would have liked to have seen two of this, two or three of it, to play with a Binet. But oh well. Uh, plenty of Tangler. We want to try and do prize manipulation is good. A couple of Kangaskhan. Okay, sure. Uh, maybe that'll be playable. And a couple of the Snorlax. Is this Lickitung do anything good? Uh, nah. Sort of. Uh, Snipe 20 is okay, I guess. So. It's very reminiscent, actually, of the old one. I think the old one was good because it did, uh, what's its face? It did, um, Resist Psychic. Had, like, 90 HP. This might not be quite good enough, but hey, 
it's annoying. Maybe we could play it. Yeah, I don't think I can complain too much here. Um, hopefully we can shore up some of our lesser accounts here. I mean, I don't know if I need Mount Moon, to be honest, but hopefully we can get, like, I don't even think we can get one more Great Ball, but definitely need the Celio. And we need to get that Nidoran. And that's probably about it. Cool stuff. Okay, thank you guys very much for watching. I think we can do a lot of interesting bits with this one. And uh, until next time, take care everyone.